It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Last time we saw um, the advent of lowering of um, people due to secrets. Actually, lowering of robots towards people due to secrets being revealed. Uh, so if we look at our chart here, the S's mean Mark two, Mark 4, the W's mean Mark 5. So you can see that the um, the blue team is doing better in terms of the model of their Tattlebot. Whereas the green team, and you can't really see this as well because those dice don't really um, don't really portray the situation as graphically as this track does, which is one advantage to the track. Um, but having eight on the track is 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 a is a lot and can be kind of fiddly. Um, the green team is doing better in terms of energy, so that's where those things lie. That's kind of their stat advantages, disadvantages. The green team is also, let's look at their hit points, I guess. They're about the same on hit points, but I think the green team's maybe doing a bit better. All right. Yeah, they're doing better. Then if we look at the map, we see that we have several situations going on and our players have chosen their forms. So we have the situation here between the potential lovers, as I like to think of them, Smudge and Shell. Um, shell shifted into a rock, uh, which is the big bird, not the stone, in order to better give chase of Smudge, who is the only one on the green team yet to have kind of penetrated um, the blue team's barriers there. And so she, she being, becoming a rock helped her shed the web that Smudge had put on her because she became too large for the web to hold, yeah. which is one reason she chose that form. Another reason was because of her lack of energy. She couldn't choose very many other large forms. And the final reason is the rock can move and the rock can attack. Um, Smudge, for his part, he became a giant scorpion, so that should be an interesting battle. Again, the scorpion has another special effect, poison. All right, so that's that situation. We have a situation here with the dragon, Skibby coming after Tinkerbell, who's pulling secrets out of this secret box. Um, I think she's pulled out two, maybe. So I think there's one more. I guess we can peek at that. Nope, there's two more. She's pulled out one. All right, so the dragon remained. Tinkerbell, however, she became a jungle. Jungles are nice because they have a, a really high defense, but that's all they have. They can't move. They have no initiative modifier, and they are... Um, they can't attack. So she intends to just be a jungle and try to pull out secrets in the hope that she can survive another fire blast, which she can. She's got the hit points for it, unless her secrets go down before the attack happens. Um, over here we have the kind of chase happening between Jules and Chinky. Chinky is a uh, griffin still, and Jules is still a cheetah. So we still have the griffin chasing the cheetah. Cheetah's faster. Um, on land, but the griffin is more fierce, but not by much. But it's a wounded cheetah. It's got a hurt leg. We have another little drama here going on between Danimal, who's that green bear, and uh, oh, what's her name? Dancing Bear. I don't know. I can't. I, it, I always stumble on that one. I remember it, no problem, but I stumble on it. Danimal and Dancing Bear. Um, Dancing Bear, as you recall, had been moving down the river. It, first as a whale, then as a manta. She's now abandoned her water forms and turned into a hydra, a very defensive um, thing, kind of like the jungle, except the hydra can move, and the hydra has a particular weakness, which is the dragon. She was thinking, okay, one, she, she might coax this dragon to come get her. Okay, that's one advantage to that form. Two, the animal likely isn't going to turn into a dragon. His energy wasn't that impressive and he's in he's a mark four so he doesn't get as much energy back and even if he did that would deplete all of his energy and she would still have enough hit points to, to maybe come back at him so she became a hydra oh three the hydra has enough movement to get to this secret box here so she's going to change objectives since Danimal kind of is right here doesn't make sense to stay in the water for him and hit this secret box instead and I think that's all of our points of contention let's play Jules has very nearly made a malformed pretzel, um, and in the process she went shoop, 
Um, in the process, she learned another one of the green team's secrets. So let's roll to see which one it is. This is going to be one of their, their closest to their heart secrets, which is either their secret fantasy or their unusual fact. Um, unusual fact comes up first, but if, she's gonna, if she rolls um, chinky, it's going to be his secret fantasy. Five, that's a re-roll. Four, so this is going to be smudge. Let's figure out an, let's find out an unusual fact about smudge here. And that is, saw myself this morning on a milk carton. So he feels lost, he feels like he's a lost child, and yet he's an adult. Hmm. That'll make Smudge our first player to become a thaumaturge, 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 uh, in shake, shapeshifter's parlance, which uh, translates to Mark III here. So his hit points went down to 10. He was at 14 before. His wisdom went down, battery went down, everything went down. He's definitely inhibited by that um, return to humanity. Chinky versus Jules, Griffin versus Cheetah. All right, three against one, first attack, rolling on the two column. Three, that's gonna be two damage to Jules. She gets to counterattack. Three against two, that's the one column. One, no damage at all. All right, so he got some, got a little bit of payback. Overall, I would say, Getting secrets is, is more damaging than damaging is damaging. Um, but there's going to come a point when getting secrets will, will reach its end. Once they've reached Mark 1, they can't be any more weakened by secrets. And then it's going to come down to combat. So good practice for Chinky. Skibby, for her move, opted to leave the jungle alone. The combat results table would have given her like a 50% chance of even doing any damage. and just would have been a little and that, that wouldn't have really stopped uh, um, uh, Tinkerbell from getting any secrets. She also decided not to go against the Hydra because the Hydra's still in the water, and when they're in the water, the dra that's the one like kind of counter to the dragon is being in the water and then the fire does nothing. So she went over here and she's about to breathe fire on the already wounded Jules. Jules is down to 11 now. Would have been 10 had she not healed herself. That's going to be six against one, which is a five. So the most she can do is seven, the least is four, which is still quite a bit. And she did five. So that's going to take Jules down to six here. She's getting beat up, but she's getting plenty of secrets and um, occupying two forces of the four of the green team. The dancing bear Hydra is about to reveal yet another secret from the green team. Let's see who is the lucky individual who will return to some of their humanity. It is Skibby. This is the first secret we found out about Skibby so far. Let's find out what she was like in high school. She was the worst driver in high school. She's been driving all right so far. Um, she got right to here, which wasn't bad. And she's exuberant, sincere, and fun. I think we can all say that is true about Skibby. Smudge had the option of attacking, but it would have been really hard to move around there, and I don't think he actually could have gotten there. So instead, he's revealing another secret. This one is Dancing Bears. So Dancing Bear is also going to become a thaumaturge, and Mark III, and we are going to find out two more of her secrets. This is the first time we're going to find out about their personal motto and what they're most proud of. Her first, her personal motto is follow your dreams. Whoops, sorry, I, I keep revealing things you shouldn't know. And her, she's most proud of her flute playing ability. So she's a dancing flute playing bear that follows her dreams. Sounds like someone I would like to meet. And that's going to empty out this secret box. So we'll turn it upside down so we remember that. And... <laughs> 
after Danimal and Bison form, which I guess just should explain why he maintained bi he went to Bison form instead of staying as a Rhino. Rhino's better, but he would his wisdom is less, so he didn't have access to other nodes as a Rhino because it would take him four to get to the the node changeover space, and then he wouldn't have any more to move. He's down to four now, so he moved to Bison. What it's also cheaper too, and. Felt like the attack's about the same. He's kind of on the attack more than on the defense. And so he went with Bison instead. But he stopped right here. No sense in charging the um, the Hydra because he wouldn't be able to damage it. That's where he is. Then that's going to leave our make it our jungle's turn, our jungle Tinkerbell. And so we get to reveal another secret. And this one is Danimal's. All right. So Danimal, we're going to find out a bit about... Ah! I'm gonna find out a bit about it. Uh, um, your personal motto is be yourself, and you're most proud of your successful landscaping business. Right. More humanizing of Danimal. Not in his best interest in this context, but I bet it'll help him get laid. We're gonna end the turn with Shell the Rock taking on the giant scorpion that is Smudge. Even though she kind of has a combat disadvantage, he can hurt her more than she can hurt him. Um, she's kind of set her sights on taking him down. Another option for her would be to fly over here and maybe protect this area, but it's really hard to protect in this game because people can just move past you. So it's really a, a matter of threatening them away, but we haven't seen a lot of that actually happening. So she's going to go full on attack Rock 3 against Scorpion 2, so she's going to roll on the 1 column here. And there we go. But then he gets to counterattack, and, and if he's successful, he can poison her, which is not good. Six. She got a big hit, though. Three damage to Smudge. I'll make a note of that, and then he's going to counterattack anything but a one, and I believe she's poisoned. I'll have to look at the poison rules. It's been a while for me. Two. So that's, that is going to poison her. I don't think poisoning is that bad in this game. I think it's worse in other games, but um, I'll look at that now. So what Poison is going to do is it's going to give her a 50% chance of taking another one damage next turn. So not that bad. Uh, much better than what Smudge is experiencing. He's down to 7, which is the lowest on his team, um, compared to 6, which is uh, Jules, Jules amount, which is the lowest on the blue team. Just some stats for you. I don't know if they really are relevant or anything, but they're stats. Just got done with the initiative roll for the forthcoming turn, and I wish I'd videoed it because it was really close, and it's an important initiative roll. Um, there, were, there ended up being a roll off against our Griffin and Cheetah matchup here, uh, Chinky and Jules, which could could really matter. Um, so first of all, they tied, which ties go to whoever has the best reaction score, but they have the same reaction score, so then they have to roll off. They tied on the first roll off. On the second roll off, Chinky got the upper hand, so he's going to get a hit in before Jules runs off again, which has kind of been what she's doing, uh, running off and doing things. Um, they both stayed their forms, as did Skibby, who's here as the dragon. This is going to be the last turn that she can stay as a dragon. Her um, energy creation potential has gone down. She's down to three magic points now, or energy, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's where she is. Other transformations. Oh, well, let's talk about the other dragon. We have a new dragon here in Danimal. Danimal's hoping to strike before the potential is lost to him. He's down to Mark Three status, so he's not going to be able to gain as much. Um, Smudge over there. He became a bug, which is going to let him fly away. His his um, hope is to fly away and then hide. Since he's in the woods, he has a better chance of hiding from uh, Shell as she pursues him. She remained a rock. Um, and then we have a couple jungles here. We have a jungle here, a new one, in Dancing Bear. Uh, she figured she was kind of thinking about maybe turning into a bird and flying this way. But she thought she would try to milk this secret box for as long as she could and being a jungle is a good way to do that. I think jungles are kind of a key to Tattlebots. We'll know your secrets. We also have a jungle here in um, Tinkerbell, who is the only person who's still in Mark V status. We have not learned any secrets about Tinkerbell yet. 
So we'll see if we can get some this turn, but it's going to have to be probably Smudge who would get it. Um, and since he didn't, since he's a bug, he can maybe get a secret from that secret box yonder, or else make a make a dart towards the um, home secret base. But first, Chinky gets to attack, and Jules is going to get to a counterattack. So let's do the die rolls now for that. Uh, Chinky's rolling on column two. You got a six. That's great. That's four. That's going to take Jules down to two now. She's close to being dead. Um, if he can maintain his pursuit of her, she definitely will be. But unfortunately, the, the, the upside of him being able to go first is that he gets to attack her before she runs away. Downside is she's going to get a considerable head start should she decide to run away. And I don't know why she would not at this point. Um, so she can counterattack on the one column and she got a one so once again she did no damage to Chinky I think last last turn she also rolled a one Jules ran away but she undershot it um, unfortunately she's been once bitten twice shy babe and ended up here she she actually could have used one more point of movement but she was did not want to run into this thing it would have killed her um, in which case she wouldn't have been able to get any more secrets that might put her in range of the dragon um, in which case she would get killed anyway, but then she'd bring the dragon away from everyone else. So that's not horrible, though she doesn't want to die. I should point out at this point that death does not mean you're eliminated from the tournament in this game. It's a team game, so if your team wins, you're going to move on to Kriegbot. Um, but it does mean that your team is down a member, which could mean your loss. The dragon Skibby was able to catch up, uh, to Jules, and so Jules is going to be dead. Um, now, the dragon didn't even have to roll because the, the lowest damage she could have done is four, and Jules had two left, so that puts Skibby, or that, that puts Jules out of the game. Um, Jules can feel, wet, feel good about the fact that she did, did quite a bit of damage to the other team in terms of discovering a lot of secrets and tying up their resources and kind of like keeping them from going out because they were so busy chasing her down for a lot of the time. But they were eventually successful, and that, that makes for a four and three game. Um, and the four has a bit more magic points than the three, even if they, well, maybe not. All these dragon transformations they just did kind of, kind of wore them down. But it's still four to three, and now they're going to be able to turn their attention to these jungles that have been sitting here taking their secrets, but not before the jungles get to take some secrets, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Smudge the bug has made it to a secret box, but not before getting clipped by the secret box. He didn't quite get his movement down right, and so he's going to be rolling on the six column here. He's got seven hit points left, so he's got a 50-50 chance of surviving. Rolling low is good for him and would reveal a secret for the, the blue team. This could um, really mean a lot for the game. If he's not successful here, the green team is going to be in big... Tr no, the blue team is... The green team, yeah, is going to be in big trouble. And phew, that's lucky for Smudge and the green team. So he's going to go down to two. Which we saw how deadly that place can be in Jules just now, but he is going to reveal a secret, so let's see what he got. And that is one for Shell. Oh, oh my. How fitting. Shell is the one who is pursuing him in so many ways. Um, so let's take a look at Shell. We're going to find out a bit about her personal motto. And she'd like to meet Phil Collins. So, personal motto is eat fiber, exercise. Oh no, I'm, I'm not the personal motto. Or not who she'd like to meet, sorry. Um, she, her personal motto is to eat fiber, exercise, die anyway. She's got a sense of humor. She's most proud of Jesus changing her life into something beautiful. Jesus and Phil Collins. The, you don't know about Phil Collins, you only know about Jesus. She's more human regardless. And Shell pretty much copied Smudge's flight path with just a, a small alteration. Um, and so she's got a pretty good chance of beating him, taking him out of the game. If she gets anything but a one, Smudge is wiped off.
the board. And she got a six. She did it with gusto. She laid into him, so to speak. And Smudge is our second deceased player. After Danimal breathed fire and got a lucky um, jungle burning roll of six to do three damage to Dancing Bear, we're going to reveal secrets in both of these secret boxes as the jungles get their turn. So let's see here. We have a secret from Skibby. Oh, Skibby, you were so mighty, but now you have fallen. And we'll do them both one at a time. The final one here is also Skibby. Okay, you're really fallen, Skibby. So we're going to reveal everything about Skibby except for her unusual fact and her secret fantasy. So we, we get the great opportunity of really getting to know Skibby right now. And if you look at her, why wouldn't you want to? All right, so Skibby's pet peeve is handicap parking, which says something, I think. Uh, she'd like to meet uh, Leona Helmsley or Charles Manson. That says something as well, and I think has a interesting connection with the, the previous pet peeve. Um, her personal motto is, why not, which also says something. She's most proud of her shoes. So we've learned a lot about Skibby. You can judge for yourself whether or not you would like to know more, but rest assured you will next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Tattlebots, we'll know your secrets.